6.3. He's gotten better every single year. Then you have DeAnthony Thomas, arguably the fastest man in football, as Sports Illustrated likes to call him. And then uh, Mario Ta, who can pass and run himself. Yet uh, Thomas, I mean, his, not only is he incredibly fast, his routes are, all, routes are up and incredibly deceptive. I'm pretty sure he could navigate his way through a, a life-size maze at a dead sprint. I mean, this man has serious moves. Anderson remains in the game, as does Eric Stevens at fullback. They're both offset next to Bridgeford, who is in the shotgun. Bridgeford looking over to the left side of the field. He's trying to get it into the end zone. It's Darius Howe, who makes the catch. Touchdown, California! It's great work right there for the Bears. They had they had a cow on the near side, just worked his way over to the northwestern corner, wide open. Everybody forgot about him on the Oregon defense. That's about as easy a touch, passing touchdown as you can get. The most impressive thing about that play for me was Bridgeford's pass. So many times, just a couple of plays ago on the other sideline, we saw him overthrow Chris Harper out of bounds. And here, it was a, as a shot straight to Darius Cole, where only he could catch it. Only Powell could catch that ball, and that's what impressed me. That's a huge boost for this offense and for Maynard's confidence. I, you just said it, Jamie. Yeah, it is. And, I, and to add to the list of Bridgeford's firsts here in this game, first touchdown for him in, 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 in this season, uh, coming, of course, very late. He is so far making the most of his opportunity here tonight. And we again have seen other folks who haven't gotten as much play time this year. Uh, we've seen Powell and our Harper on that drive contribute significantly. And that's wonderful to see. And we are looking at a tie game here with 8.04 remaining in the first quarter. And we've said it before, I'll say it again, this running game is getting predictable for the Bears. It's so tough to have a cohesive offense when you're not able to pass the ball. Yeah, I mean, if those are the plays that are getting called, I mean, that's just what you got to do. I mean, sometimes there's not the reason why. There's but to do and be tackled. And that's what I think we're seeing out here on the field so far for the Bears offense. The three-yard line, but it doesn't really matter because time has expired. That is the end of the first half. Just very awkward play calling to end this half. Cal losing right now to the Ducks 24-10 here well, at Memorial Stadium. Let's the, get some final thoughts before we send it back to the basement of Barrows Hall. The reason the play doesn't work there on that last time is because they took 15, 20 seconds off the first on first down, run, running Sofelli to the outside. If they wanted to take some shots, take some darn shots on, yeah, on, on, you on the You have nothing to down. lose. Exactly. I mean, just go long and try to get something amazing for the fans here. Uh, and to just have Sofelli trudge up the field for a couple yards and then run out the clock for the remainder of the half, I find rather inexplicable. And we're looking at the stats at halftime. Cal actually leads in time of possession, 16.36 to about 13 minutes, but uh, 13.24, but that doesn't, you said it, Jamie, that doesn't say a whole lot against Oregon because they can score so fast. That final drive, it only took them... uh, Two minutes and 18 seconds yeah, to put it on the board. Yeah, actually, I believe a mere minute 18 there, and they have had oh, yeah, minute. 20, 20 touchdowns this year that have taken them under 60 seconds to progress the length of the field. That is a unique asset of this Oregon team. But I want to start by something a little more encouraging, Josh, and that's the play of Cal leading up to those final two minutes. Now, just to highlight one facet that I think is particularly positive for this Cal team, and that is the offensive line. Ridgeford, I don't believe he's been sacked once. He has had a fair amount of time in the pocket uh, to just to do with the ball what he will and, and look at whatever options are out there and choose the best one. Has he always chosen the best one? No. But I think things, if he was a little bit more pressured, we could see things be a lot more difficult for him. Right now, his numbers are reasonably respectable. 7 for 12 uh, in, in, uh, in pass completion rate and 87 yards on the night with one touchdown. So I think that the offensive line has got to be given some credit here for Definitely. keeping Bridgeford com- comfortable and keeping the game as close as it is. Really, first and goal, ball on the four-yard line for the Bears. 10-13 remaining in the third quarter, 24-10, to Oregon on top. Didn't mean another handoff, he's still fell eight. Touchdown, California! Oh, yeah. 
East 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 LA took the handoff, went over to the left side of the line, and pretty much got in there uncut to cut this to a 24-16 ball game, potentially 24-17 pending the point after. We got second and ten. Brendan Bigelow now in the game. It's going to be a handoff to Bigelow. He's come over on the near side, eventually gets taken down. <laughs> Basically at the line of scrimmage, he just couldn't get to the outside edge fast enough. Yeah, he had nowhere to go as he ran laterally behind the line of scrimmage. There was just a wall of Oregon defenders just sort of sidling along, waiting for him to make a move forward. As soon as he did, they were all over him, and there was no gain on that play, I don't believe. Possibly a yard, but that's it. He's got a lot of pressure, throws this one. It is intercepted by Oregon. Great catch there by Boseku Lakombu to make that catch. He bobbled it for a second, eventually pulled it back, and that's a big, big turnover, the first of the game. Okay, so right there, Bridgeford appeared mainly just reluctant to take the sack, even though that was clearly the smarter play. He threw it into not only just at, like, shoulder level right up the gut. There was no Cal player that was really in a position to get that. An easy pick. Bridgeford should have taken the sack, accepted the punt. Instead, Oregon with great field position. Marcus Mario Tall looking over to the far side of the field. Pass is completed. There's a lot of open space, and this will be touchdown duck. So immediately after Cal turns the ball over, Oregon takes advantage, puts six more, possibly seven, points on the board. So this will be a personal foul against the Bears. Clipping. It'll be clipping. You never see that. Wow. And wow, where did that play occur? At what stage in the drive, perchance? I mean, yet again. That's Cal, a 15 yard or two. The it big is. One. And Cal, I mean, we they started playing much more cleanly, but that is what, the third or fourth personal foul on the evening? Right, right around the 30 yard line, too, right when they yeah. get into that when yeah. they get into that area. And that is not and, acceptable. And if anything is going to win or lose this game, it's field position for Cal, and here, here they are again. Yeah, I remember when I uh, was back in, in Utah for that game, and Cal looked strong the first, I'd say, quarter and a half, and then the cracks started to show, and after that, well, the, the floodgates opened, and Utah went on to a 49-27 victory, and I'm seeing similar trends here. Cal looked so good, actually, for much longer than just a quarter and a half. As we see, we only have 40 seconds left in the third quarter, but... The same mistakes as soon as there begin to be failings on the part of the Cal defense, they continue. They've had a hard time bouncing back once uh, the opposing team takes a commanding lead. And instead, the mistakes and the, and the penalties and, and really just individual overreactions continue to pile up. So he will be a good player next year in a, in a bigger role. Yeah, Cal's got a lot of up-and-coming assets, and Lasco is one of them. There's no doubt Cal has, has great depth uh, on, on this team. To, uh, Another handoff to Lasco. He gets the ball stripped. I think it was from behind as it popped out about seven or more yards in front of him. Oregon does recover. So I guess think one thing to work on for the offseason for Lasco, holding on to that ball. Yeah. Broadcasters jinx anyone. Yeah, I got to say, that is a very unsavory icing on an already unappetizing cake. <laughs> that, that's we really are that. getting into metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is pathetic anymore. So as the seniors wander around the field one last time, just want to get you guys' final thoughts on the game, the season, really anything. Just want to give you guys one more time. Well, if I might compare and contrast this game itself to the season I mean it started out again with a lot of potential a lot of uh, very effective play by this Cal team but then uh, it just sort of tailed off and it ended up being a very very lopsided affair and that's what we've seen uh, in the season as a whole I think as you mentioned they're three and eight overall here and I, ultimately things were not able to coalesce for them there was just a whole lot of parts that did not mesh together to create a winning uh, winning club. I mean, they, they kept so many games close, were in so many for so long, not able to close individual games out, not able to put together a winning season. Yeah, that's, that's very insightful, Jamie. I'll, I also, I, I, th I think if, if we're going to look at this at a macro level, too, 
the team's just tired. You know, they they, they tired out against yeah. Oregon, and and now they've and they've tired out for the season too. It, it you know we can put it on a bye week. We can we can pin it on a tough schedule with with lots of night games and trips on the roads and and whatever you want to say. But, but the, the the team is tired. They're a little unmotivated, and I need to go. 